Morgan, I mean, I remember you when you started out. And you see, I reckon you were the first one to work it out in a different coming through we were all about test cricket we just thought about the longest format t20 was had been around and the ipl was just coming about and i remember you training on like academy trips and you were just you were practicing that form of the game so you're very much that new breed of cricketer where are cricketers at now do you think i think that's a great question i think uh, ultimately younger players always give you a great in, insight into where cricket is at right now. And our young, youngest, best talents coming through, so our um, Sam Curran or India's Shubman Gill, guys like that who are coming in, who are you know starting out on their journey to international cricket, are really prioritising test match cricket. And that to me means that even amongst, you know, the, the, the popularity that T20 has brought to the game and the glitz, the glamour, um, the revenue streams it's brought in, cricket is in a really healthy place. And I think the biggest question we will have, probably for as long as we all live here, is what is the relevance of the three formats and where do they stand? And I think one of the biggest mistakes we make as a sport is having all three formats overlap or not recognising the roles that they play within the game. So T20 cricket is our avenue into you know, a, a young kid who, is, who has never played the game and sees this big shiny thing on TV with stars and, and the ball being blasted everywhere and fireworks everywhere. And he sits up and goes, right, I don't want to play that. 50 over cricket has a different dynamic. It gives you a little bit of everything all in one day. Test match cricket is our most prestigious game for our elite players. And it will always be like that. And for the, you know, the, a very few countries around the world, it is pri prioritised. Where the game has fallen behind a little bit is probably since 2008, the start of the IPL. Cricket has been a little bit of its victim of its own success. You know, T20 has, has completely changed the game for the better. It's, it's made it more popular. It, it's brought great passion and energy towards the game. But as a sport, sometimes we fight that passion and energy because we've been brought up maybe in a different generation where there were one or two formats for a very, very long time. So when things tend to change very quickly, the tendency is always to say, no, I prefer this and this is great and this is happening. But my biggest worry is that the game is in changing uh, and accommodating the pace at which it's growing. So it's, it's definitely an area of concern and, and one that needs improvement going forward because uh, you play against countries and, and they're not able to feel their best team because they're having to compete with big leagues around the world that, are retaining the players ahead of their countries. So uh, whoever is in charge need to you know, go ahead and think about what that will look like in, in, in 10 more years' time. Because if they don't manage it or get a hold of it, uh, franchise leagues around the world will become more and more, more dominant. So what can we do in England? What's the solution? I mean, it's probably a very... You know, it's not an easy answer that. But what would you do to make sure that everything gets its time? Everything gets what people want. Yeah, I think that you know we're doing great things at the moment, and and I think English cricket is in such a healthy place. Um, we have you know superstars of world cricket playing for us. Uh, we won a World Cup. Preparation for the Ashes at the end of the year is going fantastically well. So. As a, as a performance or as a product, everything is all in our favour. I think the introduction of the 100 will pay huge dividends for you know, the popularity and the, um, the participation in, in the game up and down the country. So I think, like I said, we're doing a lot of things right. I think differentiating when and where the formats and play are going to be key throughout the summer. So juggling the schedule the whole time is, is you know, difficult at times. But it, I actually like our international schedule this summer because 
it's in blocks. So you have the white ball block in one period. So there's absolute clarity for all of our fans and supporters. You know, this is the white ball period. We're playing Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Brilliant. Uh, one day is in T20s, right? And after that, we're playing India in, in, in test matches. And that's the rest of the summer. I think when you chop and change the whole time, it creates a lot of confusion, um, which I don't think is healthy for the sport. You say juggling the schedule is an absolute nightmare. And it is. It must be for Ashley Giles, the director of English cricket. He spoke yesterday um, about he didn't want to clash with the England players this winter about the IPL because he feels that by going down that road, England players might walk off into an IPL sunset. How do you handle that IPL, the whole IPL thing? Do you let them just be or do you have to rein it in at any stage? No, I think, I think, I think actually the ECB are handling it brilliantly because a lot of the, the boards around the world that have fought the biggest competition in the world and lost has not been a healthy thing for that country and the, and the performance and um, how they've gone. So I think they're actually managing it really well. You know, the IPL is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It's a huge part of the, the schedule as a whole. And it is a great experience to play in. Uh, I played my first IPL 11 years ago now. And I remember going into the changing room where Dravid, Cumblay, Callis, um, Stain, Boucher, all were changing in and around. And, and, you know, the conversations that were flowing, I just sat back and listened for the majority of the time. And the experience like that for a young cricketer coming through, and then on top of that, going out and, and performing against these top players, we're seeing firsthand in the Indian team at the moment, because you actually have players that are products of the IPL above all else that are now coming in and playing cricket for India. India. Um, guys like Surya Kumar Yadav, uh, Ishan Kishan. These are guys that, that have played against our superstars in a uh, Mumbai Indian shirt for a period of time and grown in confidence and almost bridged the gap between domestic and international cricket by experiencing this. So I think it's a huge thing to be a part of it. I think um, as of the, the last four years where our players have been encouraged to go and play for all these benefits, I think that should continue. You mentioned the 100 there, and obviously the IPL we've been talking about. <clears throat> our assets are going off and playing IPL and doing well out of it. Do you think there will be any role reversal and we could get players from India for, for the 100 in your conversation with Indian players? Somewhere down the line, it would be great for our domestic 100 tournament, wouldn't it? It'd be brilliant. And just just having conversations out here or even in general about the 100, I know that, that are, there are Indian cricketers that would love to play not only in the 100, but other competitions around the world. Uh, you know, they love traveling and experiencing new cultures and new conditions. Um, so they would add, add huge value to, to a tournament like that. Well, I mean, I always think you get put in that white ball bracket and you're England's white ball captain, but you've got one of the best cricket brains of anyone I've met. So what would you do then? And you haven't really got a stake in the game anymore. What about test cricket in England? What would you do? How would you improve domestic cricket, stuff like that, to help our test game? Yeah, yeah. for me, it's all about uh, improving the standard of, of, of the cricket below test match cricket. I think um, you can go in and play test match cricket, but if, you, if you're trying to learn on the job or, or um, you're not quite up to standard and you try to improve your skills and compete against the best in the world in our toughest game, it's just too much to ask. So for me, it would be looking uh, quite deeply into our county championship fixtures and system and the way that we, the, 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 pitches and ball contribute and, and present different challenges than anywhere else in the world. And, you know, what that looks like, I'm not quite sure, but, but certainly playing cricket in April doesn't help. What about spinners, things like that? How, I mean, we played at a time when every county had spinners. You would have played with Sean Udall, people like that. They just aren't around anymore. And you even feel that in white ball cricket, don't you? 
Yeah, massively. You know, it, I can flippantly say no cricket in April, but as regards, you take spinners alone. They don't play in April and May. You know, as a, I've captained Middlesex before, you're sitting there, it, it's freezing cold, the, the wicket's as green as a leprechaun, and you're looking at it going, I cannot play a spinner unless the guy bats or unless he's a gun fielder. He's not going to contribute anything in the game. And for a spinner, that means he's, he's two months of a six-month season. He's sitting on the sideline. He's not learning anything. He's not experiencing new things. He doesn't feel like bowling because his hands are freezing. So, again, playing in, in, in better suited conditions, either for spin bowlers or a little bit tougher conditions for guys that bowl between 70 and 80 mile an hour might test their limits a little bit and actually improve or sorry give you a better selection of a group of players to pick from moving forward to a, to a test squad and at what age do you think you should start thinking about specializing one role or another i remember speaking to Stephen fleming a few years ago and he said sometimes in english cricket we make our players try and do everything County Championship, 50 over, 20 over. I think he was talking about Samit Patel to a degree. But what age, I mean, you played Test cricket, 16 Test matches. Should you just be playing everything or at some stage, does something in your head say, you know what, the longer format's not for me? I think up until a certain age, uh, you, sh you should play everything. I actually disagree with Flem a little bit there. I think you, you can't alienate yourself early on in your career or even halfway through your career. I think just going on my experience and you know, my ambition was always to play test match cricket. Naturally, I was a better white ball cricketer just because I played a lot more limited overs cricket growing up. But the experience of, of playing test match cricket um, sort of started and finished in, in my 20s. So making that decision for me uh, was about timely and natural and the position that I was in as well, you know, the opportunity to, to go and focus on, on one area in my game that I was far better at than another. Um, so I would actually encourage everybody to, again, continue to play as many formats as you can or as your ability will allow you to. And then if, if one naturally evolves quicker or, or, or forces you down a route, yes, look at it as an option, but it doesn't mean you have to do it. What about for captains as well? Because you captains spin very well. Obviously, Adil Rashid loves playing under you and you bring out the best in him. Where do you learn that, though? Did you just did you start like that or has that just evolved? No, I, I definitely didn't start like that. Uh, you know, a lot of um, my experiences with bowlers are, are, are built on trust and preparation and being able to um, you know, call upon that during a game, either to change plans or to try something different. And, you know, captaining spin is, isn't easy. I think it's an area that I hadn't, uh, didn't have a lot of experience of before Adil came back into the side. And I think working with him and allowing him to grow and giving him a lot of freedom in, in which he does things has contributed to the, the trust that we have and the success that he brings to the side. He's, he's in my eyes, he's the best spinner in the world in white ball cricket. He's absolutely incredible at what he does. His variations that he has are both difficult to pick, but also threatening the whole time. So you know, um, the whole team recognises the role that he plays within the side and actually how, how much he has improved probably in the last two years. I mean, it annoys me that... I never see Adil Rashid get picked up in the IPL and I cannot understand why that is. But come on, tell me, why would they not go for Adil Rashid in the IPL? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. His, his numbers um, match up better, better than anybody else's in, in international cricket. And it, it's not just the last year or, or two years. Yes, he's had a marked improvement, but it's been for five, five and a half years now. And I think in, in, within Indian cricket, um, there's always a, a tendency to, to look at your local players because you know, they produce a lot of uh, top order batsmen and spinners. And they think, well, the, the value that we need within a side is probably in an all-rounder. So we spend money there or we spend money elsewhere in the auction. Um, but apart from that, I can't really see why he's not being picked up.
How do you um, compartmentalise your time and your thinking process and your planning, Owen? Because you're England's white ball captain, so you'll be thinking that, how to improve World T20. You're an IPL captain, you'll be thinking that, how to improve work with Brendan McCullum. You're a 100 captain, you'll lead conversations with Shane Warne. Do you switch from one to the other or you're thinking of all those all the time? Um, I actually try and switch from one to the other. Um, and when, so say I'm, I'm at the IPL now, so I'll be, be fully engrossed in everything that, that's going on. But at least once or twice this week, I will um, take my England cap or head, put it on and try and learn something from the experience that we've gone through or what we can do moving forward and spend an hour, a couple of hours on that and then just try and refresh my mind. So, you know, what if something crops up with the IPL that might make a difference moving forward? So it's still that trying to learn is a constant, but um, also having your two feet where they should be and your mind where it should be, which is in the present, um, makes it makes a big difference to that. But, uh, you know, captaining this, the three sides has been a great experience. Um, I don't know if you guys, you guys felt, felt this in your career, but the more that I've taken on, actually the more that I've in, enjoyed, you know, preparing for the IPL auction this year, the 100 draft, and doing the, the work that we do with England is an incredible experience because you're continuously learning mistakes and they're not necessarily on the field the whole time. Um, and you go through, you know, the more you go through something, the more familiar you are with it and the more you learn because the more you understand it. Um, so it's, it's been a great experience. and like unbelievably fortunate to be in this position. So is that the fun part of it as well? Because everyone thinks captains are about just moving the field and you do game days your time. and But before that is about the coaches, directors of cricket, stuff like that. But I get the feeling with you, and it's a part of the thing I enjoyed, obviously a different level, that setting up, that planning, all that process is what really gets you going. Yeah, it's that's, that's a fair point. That, and I, I love building relationships with, with players and, and going on a journey with them you know, one of the most privileged things um all i get to do is is to tell somebody that they're making their debut and that's one of the coolest things you can ever do because you know the smile on somebody's face the well, the last thing you want to see is worry it's, it's always delight um but you know the, the the journey that they've been on the recognition for what they've achieved and then the, the mark of a star the start of another journey is an incredible feeling to be able to pass that on to somebody. Um, but in, in preparation for games and preparation for tournaments, one of the other things that I really like is, is going through the, the analysis side of it, sitting down with our analyst, Nathan Lehman, uh, the coach, Chris Silverwood, and a couple of our assistants and specialist coaches, and just cheering the fact about the game, what might work, whether it's left field, um, whether it's just a, a silly idea that might actually become a realistic chance of, of doing something. Um, it's 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 just cool to be able to do it. It reminds me of, you know, playing club cricket or schools cricket, and in the car on the way home, I'd be talking with my dad about what happened. You know, could you have done this? Could you have done that? Um, or else just absolute silence because you haven't got any runs. Um, but all really good fun. You spoke there about one of the privileges you have as captain is giving someone their first cap. It's quite emotional when. Joss gave you that cap in the huddle the other day. Both of you, not overly emotional men, but it meant a lot to you and him, didn't it? Oh, it meant a huge amount. Um, and a lot of, while he was talking, I was just thinking, please stop. I don't like, I, do, I don't, <laughs> I don't enjoy this, particularly uh, during a, a game. This is just, I, I normally I'm quite boring, quite straight, like everything's thought, processed and logical, but that threw me a little bit. It's like, even to have him there, he's one of my, one of my best friends, um, to have him there on the day, considering he plays all formats and there's huge demands on his, on his shoulders, um, was, was very special for me. As a captain, you think, do you, do you have to not care what people think? You know, you've got your plan. You did that at the start of the 50 over campaign all those years ago when people would say, no, you've got to bat out the overs, all of that. And you just went, no. That's not how we're going to go and play it effectively. Is that, a, is that something that you learn? You, you sort of hide or what? How do you deal with all of that? Yeah, I, I deal with it in, in my own way. Um, and I've probably learned the hard way. You know, 
going through and, and as a youngster at Middlesex, you, you're always trying to gain um, a level of acceptance, uh, either within the changing room or um, either on TV or somebody might write an article. And it's just you're trying to please somebody in a way when actually it, it doesn't help anybody doing that at all. So I sort of developed um, sort of sat down and asked myself the question, well, what's going to improve my performance and help me get runs or be able to captain in a good way? And none of, none of it involved, you know, pleasing people outside the group. Um, and I think that's just a system or a, a strategy that works well with me. We, we would have players within the group that love to read articles or stuff on Twitter or Instagram or, or watch you guys, the, the, the little gems that you produce <laughs> every time on this show guys talk about it all the time um and for guys i mean a great example of that was in the world cup when um i think yeah, it was johnny so uh, and i didn't realize it because i don't keep in touch with what goes on while i'm playing johnny got 100 at um against india at Birmingham in the group stage game and his celebration was having a go at somebody and i was like who's he having a go at? what is going on here this is in the middle of a game what is going on but he did and he scored another 100 the next game and he did the same thing so there was a, a journalist who wrote something who he wanted to you know say thank you but you too um and it it, it really does work for him so it gets far far in his belly and you know his yeah. um i suppose desire to prove that person wrong suits him I mean, you just got to be stupid if you're reacting when you get like one day international hundred. <laughs> to anyone in the media, I was, surely. <laughs> I was going to give that as an example, but I chose to, to leave it out. Yeah, but jo Johnny ended up winning that game. Um... <laughs> <laughs> when you look, you can ask a question, Keith. No, I'll try it because I, I had my line at you and I've forgotten my question. <laughs> <laughs> I was so pleased he gave me a chance to have a dig at you. you know, that's 